Hi, thanks for joining us for this special episode of The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. What is a soilless mix? What does inoculate mean? Do you have inflorescence in your flower garden? Is that bad? Today we're defining gardening terms. Also, grapes are great to snack on and you can grow them in your garden too. Plus, we're going to assemble a small greenhouse, prune some crepe myrtles, and answer lots of your questions. It's 90 minutes of gardening, and it's just ahead of the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot, I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly is our horticulture expert, and Mr. D is here. Thanks Howdy. for joining us. Glad to be here. Good to be here. Dr. Kelly, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> oh yeah. We always like having you here. <laughs> Thank you, I enjoy uh -huh. being here. Well good, good. Well guess what we have for you today? <laughs> no, I don't know. Gardening terms, right? <laughs> so you're so good at that. <laughs> all right, so let's start with our first gardening term. And again, these are terms that we throw around all the time, right? right? Yeah. So we want to make sure people know what they are. Yeah. Okay. So our first term is ornamental. Ornamentals. Uh -huh. Yeah. That can mean a lot of things. Okay. But in our gardening industry and in the gardening world, that refers to plants that are used for decorative purposes in landscapes mm -hmm. and around buildings and yards. It can be specimens. It can be even cut flowers, you know, thing, okay. or house plants even. When you encompass the whole word ornamentals, you know, that's what we talk about. But now in the industry, you know, the guys that grow the plants, you know, the ornamentals to them are more the woodies, okay. like shrubs, mm -hmm. trees, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things. But it can, it can refer to perennials as well, the herbaceous, you know, okay. so that's just depending on who you're talking to. But it's decorative plants that are used in our landscapes. Okay. All right, our next term is soilless mix. We hear yeah. that term a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, we do. We really do. And we, we throw <laughs> that around a lot. But uh -huh. then, you know, what's even a misnomer more is people go and they'll say, well, I'm going to go buy some pot and soil. <laughs> right. You know, most of what they're buying nowadays is not soil. You know, right. it right. doesn't have any <laughs> field soil in it. It's uh, things like peat and um, perlite oh, and yeah. vermiculite, really right. maybe even some sand or bark. You know, so it's not soil. It's, you know, from the garden you dig up. It's not like that. So soilless mix are things, mixes, commercial mixes mm -hmm. that we buy for our pots and things like that that contains no soil. No. You know, sometimes they'll have a fertilizer charge mm -hmm. in them, you know, for a while. And they're really great because they've got all of the properties you want in a good soil. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's soilless mix. Yeah. All right, here's our next gardening term, sucker. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. <laughs> P.T. Right. Barnum said there's one born every minute, right? Isn't that what he said? But that's not what we're talking right. about. A sucker, as a horticultural or gardening term, refers to a shoot mm. that arises from the base of a, of a, of a usually a shrub or a tree right. that, that we really don't want in most cases. You know, we usually remove it. For example, some of our uh, crepe myrtle yes. cultivars want a sucker mm -hmm. and shoot up all these little shoots from the base when what we want is to make more of a tree form, you know, with our tree right. form crepe myrtles. So we usually just cut those off. And they can also arise not from the base of a plant, but also from roots, from adventitious buds. Mm. Think about mimosa. Mm -hmm. You know how right. if you have a mimosa tree and then it'll start shooting up everywhere sure across will. the yard? Okay. You know, that's, those are suckers theoretically too because they're coming off of a root okay. from that parent tree. That's a good example, okay. All right, side dress is our next term. And of course, side we hear that all the time. That's yeah, gardening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a, a term to describe a type of fertilize, fertilization. Okay. You know, how you do that. You know, we can broadcast, just get out there and just throw it every which way. <laughs> that's called broadcast. And then we have a side dress and there's other terms as, as well for other types, but we're going to okay. talk about side dress. Okay. And that's usually uh, in vegetable gardening. Mm -hmm. And you do that at a certain stage of growth when the plant is needing another big boost of fertilizer, and particularly nitrogen, mm -hmm. to help them keep growing through the growing season. And to side dress, 
you just open a trench right beside the row away from where the seeds are but close you know mm -hmm. you don't want to burn the roots and you just pull a trench and then just put your fertilizer there hence side dress yeah right mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of the other crops that we side dress are typically are the vining crops vegetable vining crops like cucumbers uh, some of the squash mm -hmm. that we have that vine watermelons cantaloupes and we usually do that when they just begin to what we call run, okay. you know, when they start yes. vining. Right. Yeah. I tell you, I think even Mr. D liked that one. He's <laughs> not in his head. It's pretty good. All right, here's our next gardening term, damping off. Yeah, that's, huh. a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a real descriptive term. <laughs> <laughs> and it refers to uh, a condition or a disease mm -hmm. that happens. It's all kind, it can be a different kinds of pathogens that cause this, okay. and it's uh, when the conditions are wet and cool. Yeah. Happens in germination beds with young seedlings usually. Mm -hmm. And just to prevent that, which is very common, it's a very common problem that happens when we try to grow seedlings, like particularly now. Oh, we yeah. want to grow something right. on the windowsill. You know, it's still cool and kind of damp there by the window or whatever. So you get uh, little old seedlings that just flop over. They die, the stem will die at the soil level and they just flop over. Mm -hmm. You know, damping off, they fall off or fall over. But you can prevent that by not putting them in cool and wet conditions if you've got a little germination tray or something, mm -hmm. or using a sterile mix, like go buy one of those soilless oh, mixes. <laughs> Don't get it out of your yard, which could be full of those kind of pathogens. So that's a good way to prevent it too. Always start with fresh mix okay. for your germination beds. And yeah. usually cool, wet weather. It's what okay. makes it worse, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Okay. Our next gardening term is loam. Yeah, loam, loam. or loamy soil, right. yeah. Um, that's, uh, that describes a type of soil that we really want in our gardens. <laughs> and right. it can be, you know, you can tell people, that you'll ask, what kind of soil I got? Oh, I got a loam, you know, and right. they're like, you know, well, you know dang, it's I got like clay. clay. Yeah, I got clay, you know. It's like gumbo to me. <laughs> yeah, so loam is, a, <laughs> is the type of good, friable soil that farmers love. You know, she's usually found like in bottom land naturally, yeah. you know, where Memphis stuff's silt loam. Yeah. Yeah, One yeah. Of the best and it can be around. right. And it can be a, a combination of silt and humus and a little bit of sand, you know, so it's a nice and a little bit of clay. Little bit little of clay. Bit, right. Little bit. Needle. Just the yeah. right little amount of clay to make it, you know, have the right water retention plus good drainage. You know, so it's the type of soil that we kinda want. Yeah. And it does occur naturally in some places, it does. you know, yeah. and it's high in vegetable matter, you mm -hmm. know, decayed vegetable matter. Right. So it has a little more organic or humus content too. So. Okay. Yeah, that's what a lot of people want. Yeah. Loam. Good. Good garden soil Good garden is usually soil. called loam. That's right. Yeah. All right. Here's our next gardening term: inflorescence. Yeah. yeah. And you actually and have you, examples of that, right? Yeah, you kind of alluded to that yeah. as something maybe bad. No, yeah. it's not bad. Do you have it in your garden? Uh, yeah, you <laughs> want it in your garden. All if right. you want flowers, you know, yeah, you got inflorescence. And that's a term that means the entire flower structure, which okay. could be the flowers, the bracts, the little stems, you know, and the branches that encompass the whole floral part of the plant. And for example, there's all kind of terms to describe the different kinds of inflorescence. And people would be very familiar with the single flower, like mm -hmm. a hibiscus. Right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, called right. a single right. inflorescence. You've just got the big flower mm -hmm. and that's it. But now, for example, there's other types that this one that I brought is called an umbel. And it's a type of inflorescence that is a grouping of flowers. And if you can see, this, these little individual dudes right here <laughs> are actual flowers. Each of these little things are flowers, little trumpet flowers. But they're, they're on a structure that they're all connected together, you see? Mm -hmm. And that's called an umbel. So it's a grouping of you know, different inflorescence together. Mm -hmm. And another example of an umbel that people might be familiar with is the Queen Anne's Lace. Oh, you know, everybody right, knows right. Queen Anne's that's Lace. Right, right, that's that's right. an umbel okay. inflorescence. And then we have another one called, there's all kinds. There's one called a raceme, which would be the arrangement of flowers that are really close to the stem, like a foxglove. Okay. You know that, yeah, so there's, but that's the term for the entire flower structure, including, you know, the different parts. Okay, inflorescence. Yeah, yeah right. and you want that in your garden. Yeah, you want that. Yeah. Right, that's good stuff. <laughs> all right, here's our next one. We want this in the garden too, node. 
Node, yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember when I was taking botany, we had nodes and inner nodes. <laughs> right, and, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I got an example of that I want to show you okay. too. Uh, this is a, and I didn't tell y'all what this was. Oh yeah, but please do. Yeah, that's an Edgeworthia. Okay. And it's very, very fragrant. It's called Chinese paper bush. Okay. And of course it's blooming now, obviously. So, you know, it's a great plant to have in the early, early spring garden because it blooms before it flowers. And it I mean, smells good. It blooms before it flowers. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that was smart. Yeah. Anyway, back up. It flowers before it leaps out. Right. <laughs> it's Does it need full sun? It, uh, it no, it gets a little shade at my house. Okay. So I believe, though, it could grow pretty much in full sun, maybe a little afternoon shade. But get back to the node issue. Uh, right here, this is a um, bay leaf, mm -hmm. you know, the plant that has this, the herb, that's the bay leaf we buy in the grocery store. But a node is a little bit of a bump on the stem. See it's little bumps? Mm -hmm. Those are called nodes, and it's the place where they're buds, and the buds can be a leaf bud or they can be a flower bud. So it's the little bump on the stem where leaves or flowers arise. And so it's a bump here, bump here, bump. And dormant, when they're dormant, you know, trees right now, you can really see, all right, you, you know, can. all the little nodes. Yes, so it's the place where the buds are, and they can be flower buds or leaf buds. Okay. It shows up really good on corn plant. Oh, yeah? Or bamboo. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. certainly, yeah, yeah. on bamboo yeah. for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you much, Dr. K. We appreciate sure, that. Sure, sure, no fun. problem. <laughs> there are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. We're out at the Agri Center. I have Wes Hopper, certified operator here. And Wes, we're going to stop the chop. Stop the chop. I like stop it. the chop. That's what Jason Reeves always says. Stop the chop. Yes. Can you show us the correct way to prune these crepe myrtles? I'll do the best I can. It's, okay. uh, this looks like it's been a maintenance nightmare <laughs> in the past. So we're going to look at it like artistic maintenance okay. and try to prune this tree to where next year it won't require so much maintenance. Okay and do it the proper way. So we'll start by being able to get to the tree. I use my hand pruners and I'll remove this, these water sprouts right. that are gonna poke me in the face as we're working. Okay. And also since we're working, looking up most of the time, we'll throw our debris away so we don't trip over it while we're working. And there is a lot of old wounds on here. If it hits me in the face, I'm cutting it first. <laughs> and also, on this tree, it has multiple stems. Notice I said tree. Tree, I did notice you These said. have been trimmed like a hedge. Wow, okay. Crepe murder, just chopped, however you want to yeah. categorize it. It's a tree. When we certify arboretums, crepe myrtles are allowed on the list, and arboretum is a place where you can visit to learn how to identify trees. All right, now I mentioned multiple stems. Put these in my back pocket. Now tell I, us what you mean by multiple stems. These are your stems right here. All right. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five stems on here. Okay. It's getting kind of crowded. You see how this is clustered up over here? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna eliminate this stem and try to eliminate some of the maintenance. Okay. And we're going to cut it in the middle so we don't have any tears, nice and slow. Put my hand saw back up. Nice clean cut. Nice clean Look cut. That. Look what I've done. I've opened it up. Wow. We may get this to look like a tree after all. <laughs> I usually like to stick with my pruners unless it's a large cut. Okay. I do have a set of loppers over there. But with this thin bark tree, sometimes your handsaw can actually scuff the bark. And we try to avoid that. Now look at me, I'm pruning on another stem that I feel like should not belong there. Ah, so that was coming off too, right? So let's eliminate some more of the maintenance. We're not gonna have the perfect shape of the, of the 
of the stems, but I'll come back later and cut those the rest of the way off. Okay. But now look, you really opened that thing up. Now I've got it open. And you can tell that we're around grass, so that means lawnmowers. Yes, and weed eaters. And weed eaters. Yes. So I think they could probably use a little roundup at the base <laughs> to keep the grass from growing around, to keep the mowers away. But in this case, these the maintenance guys are gonna see these long stems that shoot out as an eye poker, in which they are. Yeah. We got a bird nest right here. Yeah, I saw that. I don't think there's anything in it, but anytime you have wildlife in a tree, come back to it. Let the, let the wildlife survive. And we're gonna eliminate all this epicormic growth. And what kind of growth is that? Epicormic growth yeah. is growth that grows secondary. Okay. It's usually loosely attached, breaks easily. Like water sprouts. Like water sprouts. Right. I'm not, I don't want to eliminate all these. I just want to eliminate the junk. How are you doing the job on it, man? <laughs> Is, does it look the same? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Let's hope we achieve our goal. And I'm not just cutting sporadically. I'm, 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 I'm putting my eye on it. Okay. If you're using the hand printers, definitely make sure that you keep your fingertips away. It's real wow. easy to get it in the, in the caught up in the blades. And yours must be pretty sharp. <sighs> These are pretty sharp. If you notice, they have a longer handle, mm -hmm. and it's you get know, a better cut okay. with that. I'm going back a little bit past the growth collar, but okay. we're trying to prevent that succulent, epicormic growth on water sprouts from going crazy on it. See, like this is a nub right here. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. I like to get that a little bit cleaner because that's going to put out growth. Okay. It's going to go poof. Couple more of these. Step back and take a look at it. We've got a broken one at the top. We're going yeah, to tend to. Let's get rid of this one. And Chris, you can see where they came in before and they just went yeah, right straight the across the top yeah. and just completely eliminated the upper canopy. That's a lot of work. You can see the piles of what I have on the ground. Yeah. As far as the commercial companies go that, that tend to the crepe myrtles, uh, I don't know if they get pay paid by the pound to <laughs> dump the material or, oh, or what, but if you can eliminate some of the material you have to take to the <laughs> landfill, then do it. Hey Wes, don't give away their secrets now. They might be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me grab my pole pruner okay. here. Let's work on these tips. Now, when, I'm, when I prune the upper outer canopy, I just want to remove these, the, the, the old seed pods. I'm just reaching up putting some of these back. Now these, these are definitely going to put out growth when they come back out. Okay. And I, and, I still, cuts on those. Really and I still may need to come back and take some more off. This one's broke, so yeah. let's cut it right there. And I'm not just randomly cutting, I'm trying to cut it at a node, which a node yeah, is a point that. of where your buds break. Let's see that I'm taking some of these off completely. You see that I'm not taking off nearly as much as the canopy as before. I believe that one of the reasons why people commit crepe murder or hacking it is because it's easier, and maybe it is easier on a crepe myrtle that's 40 feet tall. Right. The one thing about crepe myrtles is most of the time they're planted in the wrong place. Right. And they have to be maintained like that. Because uh, otherwise it's just gonna grow into the house, under the gutter, under the soffit, and cause damage to your home. Now what about our shoots down here at the bottom too? We're gonna eliminate those. Okay. I wanna get rid of these two stubs. All right. Using my handsaw. Again, keep the blade away from you. Yeah. 
Oh, I thought that you've done this a time or two, man. A few times. Man. Well, you do a good job of that. Sure. No, thank you. There we go. Wow. Looks like a whole different tree. Right. Yes, and now look, I got very little debris in comparison to what we would have had had we yeah, just taken it all the way off. Okay. And I think it looks much better. Yeah. I guess we do have these shoots down here too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those out for us and... yeah, these are the sucker sprouts. Yeah. yeah, so you want to get these low as you can get them. Now if those keep coming back, what's the best way to, uh, you know, get them to slow down and get them to not come back? You know, we get that question a lot. Just Personally, keep... from my experience, uh, when these sprout up during the summertime, cut them off then. Cut them off. It's not so apt to grow back. And so if a part of the tree does not produce energy, uh, like the rest of it, it'll start slowing down and okay. eventually you hope for it to stop putting out like that. Okay. Good and these, if they're not cut down low enough, they're definitely gonna grow back. Oh yes, I've seen that. And you can tell also by all these knots down here yes. that there's been a lot of this grow back. But this is how I feel like they should be pruned. All right, Wes, my friend. Thank you. good, man. Thanks. Definitely appreciate that. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll come back and see what it looks like later, huh? I will. I, I definitely want to see the results. All right. Thank you much. And welcome into the studios of Channel 10. I'm Chris Hardaway. In a moment, you'll meet Chris Cooper and a special guest. But right now, you are the important one. You need to use the number you see on your screen, 325-6565. Call this station with your support because great local shows like Family Plot are made possible in part by you, the viewers. This is viewer supported TV, so we can't do it without your help. So make the telephone call now. Uh, if you're looking for great garden advice, this is the place to get it, but it's only going to stay here if you support it. Now let me entice you with some great gifts. At the $5 ongoing monthly level, that's a $60 one-time contribution, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. Plus, you'll be enrolled in Passport. Then at the $10 ongoing monthly, that's a sustaining membership, $120 for a one-time only contribution, it's the Mid-South Garden Guide plus the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. This is a 550-page guide, tons of questions. Chris and his guests are gonna tell you a lot more about it than I know in just a moment, but that's at the $10 a month level. And then at the $20 ongoing monthly gift, that's $240 one-time contribution, tickets for two to attend a taping of the Family Plot, plus the Garden Guide and the Trowel and Cultivator Set. Now this is a special opportunity. We have a limited number of seats for this taping event. So make your telephone call now and support this station and Family Plot with your dollars. Now let's go over to Chris and his guest. Thanks for being with us. We have a special guest here today, Mr. D. Glad to be here. Couldn't do the show without you. Hey, well, you do, <laughs> yes you can and you have. Uh, you guys do great when I'm not around. Oh, but it's fun to have you on. I enjoy doing it. It's actually, it, it's, it's uh, you know, I've done some TV work in other places. Okay. And this, this is by far the, the, the most enjoyable. You know, good. You, you got, you're, you're a professional. You do a really good that. job with it, and you make it, you make it, you make it fun. And the folks behind the scenes, they correct all the mistakes we make. Yeah, they make they it look really magic. They work magic. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They're the miracle workers, right? They are, they are. All right, well, look. Every gardener needs what? A couple of tools, right? Tools of the trade. Right tools there. of the Those trade, are the right? Basics, right? The basics, right? The cultivator, mm -hmm. it's a trial. That's right. Cultivator is something I actually use a lot in my own garden. You know, it's good, you know, for you know, kind of smoothing the rows out a little bit is what I use it for and to get those uh, shallow you know, uh, rooted weeds as well. Right. You then, gotta use one of those when you don't have a tractor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on the big Back and forth. Yeah, yeah. uh -huh. right. And then yeah. about the trial, I mean, what, we've used this in the family park garden a couple of times, mm -hmm. right? Close in work, mm -hmm. you know, you, you don't do as much damage with that as uh, sometimes you do with a real big, big show. When yeah, you, can right. be, you can be a lot more meticulous and, mm -hmm. and do a better job. Yeah, Joellen used it, you know, out front. The mm -hmm. flower bed. Uh, we use it a couple of times, you know, planting tomatoes and peppers and things like that. That's right. And yeah, this is this is real handy. Something it is anybody handy. can use. That's right. What, what about cleaning this up though? Oh, it's easy to clean up. It's plastic, <laughs> and you know you can wash all the dirt off of it, and you can actually uh, you can eat with it if you clean it oh, up. Oh, okay. You know, you know, eat your soup, and, and you know it, it, it's pretty good. Oh, that's how it works either yeah. way, right? And cereal. Yeah. 
<laughs> See, again, those are the things we talked about, just having fun, right? That's it. That's right. it. But again, you know, if you're a gardener, you definitely need, you know, these two tools, right? To Gotta get started off two. with. Gotta have those two. Right. And you know how soils are. I mean, this actually go through the soils here pretty good. That's right. You have good soils. That's right. You got you to gotta, you gotta be able to, you know, we do a little no-till, yeah. but, but you got you to gotta have seed to soil contact. All right. Well, this will definitely get it done for That's you. It. That's right. All right, we'll be back more while Chris and Mr. D in just a moment. But right now, you need to make the telephone call. Go to your phone, pick up the phone, dial 325-6565, and support this station with your dollars so that great shows like Family Plot can continue. Now, earlier I mentioned monthly giving. It's called a sustaining membership, and it's very simple to do. In the amount that you choose, and it could be anything, $5, $50, $500 a month, uh, will be deducted either through a credit card or an electronic bank draft system. So it's a great way of monthly giving. It spreads your cost out over the course of a monthly period and it's a nice sustaining income for us. So think about becoming a sustaining member as you look at the gifts that I'm offering. At the $5 ongoing monthly gift level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set, plus you're enrolled in Passport, more about that in a minute. At the $10 ongoing monthly level, it's the Garden Guide, a 550-page guide published by the Memphis Garden Club and contains everything, literally everything you need to know about gardening in the Mid-South, plus you'll get Passport in the member card. And then at the $20 ongoing monthly level, it's tickets for two to attend a taping of the family plot, plus the garden guide and the trowel and the cultivator set. Uh, very limited number of seats. This is going to take place on Saturday, August 18th uh, of this year. Uh, you'll get to meet Mr. Chris, uh, Mr. D, you Chris, Mr. D, and Joe Ellen Diamond, all here on set. So, there's plenty of reasons, three right there, that you should be making the telephone call and supporting the station. Back to Chris again. You know, Mr. D, one of the things about actually hosting this show, I travel a lot, right? And when I travel, people actually recognize me. Uh, for instance, I was in Tipton County here recently, and I was with uh, Joellen Diamond, uh, Dr. Natalie Baumgartner, uh, and some other folks, and we were actually, uh, you know, just walking to a restaurant for lunch there on the town square. So I walk in the door, and this lady's facing me, right? So once I hit the door, walk in, she's looking at me like this. I was like, uh-oh, here it comes, right? She's like, don't I know you from somewhere? And I always say, well, do you really? <laughs> and she was like, you're Chris Cooper, you're that garden guy. It's like, yes, ma'am. So, of course, the lady's like, here we go again. Can't take, can't take Chris anywhere, right? So we actually go and sit down. The waitress comes over. You know, she comes over, you know, she's getting our water, and then she looks at me. She's like, hmm, okay, how you doing today? I said, I'm doing fine. She leaves, she comes back. She's still looking at me. She didn't say anything this time. She leaves, comes back again. She's like, are you that guy from that garden show? I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Then she turns around it's like, well, you know what, you see that lady behind you with the camera? She had a camera phone. She wants to know if you can come over and take the picture with her. So I was like, oh, yeah, I, mean, I could do that. Selfie. Yeah, yeah, take a selfie. So I actually took a selfie with her, and she told me that uh, she actually invited her mom to have lunch with her that day, and her mom told her she couldn't come. And guess what? Her mom loves the family plot. Uh -oh. So she missed out. Mm, missed out. <laughs> You have any similar stories? Yeah, that's, oh, I do, okay. I, I, a number of them. I, probably <laughs> the furthest, I travel a little bit in, mm -hmm. in my job too, and uh, one morning I was uh, at a hotel in uh, Athens, Alabama. Well, how about that? I'd been doing some work at uh, the uh, Belmont Auburn University uh -huh. Experiment Station that. down there, and um, I was sitting there and I noticed uh, this guy kept kind of staring at me, and I'm you know, I was, you know, feed my face, right. <laughs> and uh, and finally he came up and said, "You're Mr. D, aren't you?" And and so of course, you know, that is this is the only place I have that name. So right, when somebody right. <laughs> asked me if I'm Mr. D, I know why they're uh -huh. they're asking me that. Uh -huh. But I've been, you know, in restaurants in uh, Dyersburg area up close to where I live, and you know, a number of times I've been approached by folks, and they all say they enjoy the show, and mm -hmm. I, I, you know, thank them. You know, I, I thank them as well. You know, it's a it's a good thing. All right. See, stories like that are important why you need to support public TV. We can't do it without your dollars, especially for local shows. They require your support. Local shows that are targeting local viewers. That's one thing that we want to do. And certainly Family Plot gives you all the information you need to help your garden grow. So if you enjoy this kind of show, you owe it to call 325-6565. Make the contribution. It's investing in your own entertainment and information enjoyment. Uh, I've mentioned Passport before. It's one of the little extras that we bring along to you. 
Uh, for every contribution of $60 or more, you will be enrolled in Passport. Now, Passport is literally, it's a digital gateway to thousands of public television shows online on your computer, on your smartphone, on your tablet, or on Apple TV. Uh, thousands of shows, everything from uh, our primetime lineup, Nature, Nova, Masterpiece Theater, American Experience, etc., all the way to our local shows and plenty more. Thousands of programs can be yours when you make that $60 plus contribution and enroll in Passport. So do that right now. One more time before we get out of the break and go back to more of the family plot, uh, I want to mention again the special taping that we're offering at the $20 gift level as an ongoing uh, uh, sustaining member. It's tickets for two to attend a taping of the family plot, plus you get the garden guide and the trowel and the cultivator set. Now this is a very special thank you gift. The taping takes place on Saturday, August 18th of uh, this year. You'll get to meet Chris, Mr. D, and Joe Ellen Diamond. Each pair of tickets will have an opportunity to ask a question and have it answered on the show. Now this is a limited pledge offer. We only have so many seats that we can accommodate here in the studio. So if you'd like to come to a taping and get all the rest of the gifts, then make that telephone call now, 325-6565, and support this station with your dollars. Remember, it is viewer-supported television, and we can't do it without your help. All right, Mr. D, let's talk a little bit about grapes. Talk about grapes. All right. Okay. Uh, I guess first thing let's talk about is uh, the similarities that pretty much all grapes have in common. Okay. Uh, they need a, a fairly high pH, you know, uh, up around six pH, six to seven pH is good for, for all grapes. And, okay. and the grapes we're talking about are the bunch type and the muscadine types. Mm -hmm. And there's several bunch types uh, out there, the American hybrids, the French hybrids, and, 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 and those kind. But um, <laughs> they all, when you're planting them, the best time to plant them is, is in the uh, uh, late winter, early spring. Okay. Uh, don't plant them too early. You don't want to put them out there before you have a, a, you know, several real hard freezes. Uh, you know, here in the Memphis area, I'd say, uh, you know, March, you know, late March, mid to late March is a good time to plant okay. in, the, in the Mid-South area here. Uh, the, uh, that is also the best time to prune them. Uh, you can go a little bit later on the pruning. Uh, when you prune them, if they're bleeding, a lot of people get concerned mm -hmm. when they're bleeding, but that's not a problem. Just the juice running out of the plant is, is not a problem. It's better to prune them uh, when they bleed a little bit than to prune them, you know, too early or in the fall. You do not want to prune them in the fall. You, you don't want to plant or prune within 48 hours of a hard freeze. If a hard freeze is forecast within the next 48 hours, wait until after that freeze occurs. Okay. And then get Makes on out sense. there and, 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 and plant and prune. So what's the difference between grapes and muscadines, though? A muscadine is a type of grape. Okay. A muscadine is a grape, but it, the muscadine is a type of grape. Okay. And, uh, and the, the muscadine types are uh, types that do well in the summertime. They're more native. To, to a lot of the country because, I mean, muscadines are native to here in the Memphis area. I, there were wild muscadines yeah. growing on Mud Island. Um, uh, of course, there's also a lot of non-native plants mm -hmm. uh, growing, <laughs> growing around also. But uh, um, in the south, the muscadine types mm. tend to do better, in my opinion. Uh, and there are several different muscadine types out there. Uh, let me go over. Uh, some of the varieties there. Okay. Right. <clears throat> uh, the uh, uh, and these are varieties that have been around for a long time. Okay. Uh, uh, I was recommending these back when I worked in, in Mobile County back in the in the 80s and 90s. But Hunt, Scuppernon, Carlos, Pride, Nesbitt, uh, Golden Isle, Triumph, Magnolia, Cowart. Those are all muscadine varieties that have been around a long time. You know, I mentioned Scuppernon. Yeah. Uh, some folks one. think that all Muscadine, they call all muscadines scuppernongs. Well, scuppernong is just one variety of muscadine. It's a female mm. bronze variety. Muscadines come in either black, they're either dark colored and, uh, and or bronze. Okay. Now there are, <clears throat> there are two types of muscadines. The, the female types require cross-pollination. They require a perfect flower type 
to pollinate them. The perfect flower type, on the other hand, is completely self-fruitful. So of the ones I mentioned, uh, one, two, three of them are females, and the rest of them are perfect flower types. So you can, uh, there are some very good publications out there. Mm -hmm. You can get on, go to your local extension office. The one I'm reading from here is a publication entitled uh, Tree Fruit and Small Fruit Cultivars for Tennessee. And I know you've got them at the uh -huh. local we extension office. Dr. Dave Lockwood put it together. There are another couple of uh, good publications. Uh, one is Grape Growing in Tennessee. Uh, this is for, if you're interested in getting in the business and growing grapes for wine or commercially, this is about a 30 page publication. Also, Dr. Lockwood put it together and it's a good one. And then, so you want to grow grapes in Tennessee. It's <laughs> another good publication it, huh? for growing them in uh, Tennessee. Now, if you're not, if you live in Mississippi or North Carolina or Florida or someplace like that, go to your local extension sure. office and, and talk to your local county agent and get, get the information there. There are a lot of vineyards, you know, popping up around. There are, there are a lot, of, be a lot of vineyards out there. Mm -hmm. But let me, let me go back and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the uh, other types okay. of grapes, sure. bunch types. There's the American bunch, uh, and then there are seedless and hybrid grapes. Uh, there are uh, Vitus vinifera grapes, which are pretty much grown primarily for wine. And uh, uh, different colors of fruit, red, blue, white, on, on the bunch types. Uh, they're used for wine, mm. or they're used table grapes, you know, for eating. Some do better for, for jellies and juices and things like that. Again, these publications right. tell you tell you all about that. Okay. Are per they considered the the bunch grapes, are they are they perfect flowered, female flowered, or most of the them self grape, fruitful? They're all self fruitful. They're all so, self fruitful. So that would mean okay. they're they have but you don't have to worry about getting right. you, you that's don't have to that's worry good. about you can have one vine. That's right. You can have one vi set vine. Uh, and that's you can good. Have, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Very good point. Small mm -hmm. yards, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and that is something yeah, homeowners, that, that's, yeah. they want yeah. to try it. Uh -huh. right? And that is something that's important to consider because if you grow muscadines, uh, it's recommended that you plant them 20 feet apart. Wow. Yeah, they take a lot of space. That because they'll have a 10 foot runner. Uh -huh. And you'll have mm -hmm. to, you'll have to it prune it right. to 10 feet because it's, wanna go, it's gonna wanna go 20 feet. And so you'll have within the row, 20 feet apart on muscadines, and then you want your rows 12 to 15 feet apart. So it takes a lot of space if you're growing muscadines. Yeah. Uh, not real good in a small, uh, uh, you know, zero, you know, backyard, a small backyard. The bunch type grapes don't require quite as much space. Uh, you can put them, you know, eight to 10 feet within the row and, and because they're not quite as aggressive as uh -huh. the muscadine types. Uh, you still probably need to leave, you know, 10, 12 feet between the rows. But um, uh, the, another, another thing that they have in common is, is uh, they all uh, fruit on current season's growth that came out of one-year-old wood. Okay. And so it's important to prune them. Don't mm -hmm. wait three or four years or seven, especially if you have uh, uh, the muscadine types that are... Uh, they're very, very, you know, they, they grow a lot. They grow fast. Yeah. Uh, it's important to prune them uh, annually. Uh, and you can take off most of last year's growth. You can prune them back to two or three buds. You know, just follow that long runner all the way back uh -huh. and have two or three nodes yeah. or no, two yeah. or three buds <laughs> right. and, yeah. and yeah. cut it off. And so you'll leave a little stub there. Yeah. And so that's your one-year-old wood. And, and the growth that comes out of those buds uh, will be the current season's growth that you'll fruit on. Now, if you go all the way back to the main stem, then the new growth that comes out is going to be coming out of what? Two, yeah, two. Yeah, older, older wood, right. two or three-year-old right. wood. Right. Yeah. Will it right. fruit? No. Yeah. You will have a beautiful vine. It'll be big <laughs> and it'll be green and it'll do, do real well. So it's important to leave a little bit of, of little last bit, year's okay. growth when you prune them back. There are a lot of different trellis systems that you can use for grapes. Uh, uh, you can have a this one of the simplest is a single wire, which is you know a post with a mm -hmm. single wire going across the top. Uh, you can have a double wire system, which has a single wire going across a post that's like you know five feet tall and then about a couple of feet lower. Another wire under there, and you have a double wire system. 
Uh, there's a Geneva double curtain, which kind of looks like my mother's uh, 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 clothesline. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. got, it's, got, it's yeah. really got three wires. It's got uh, a wires going out on the end of the Geneva double curtain system, and then one going along the top of the, the post uh, to kind of... Uh, uh, and that, but that's the Geneva double curtain, and it's probably the most popular. It exposes more of that plant to sunlight than than any other type. Than just doing the straight right. up couple of wires. Right. You can yeah. plant your plants and put in the trellis system after you plant them if you want to, or you can go ahead and put your trellis system in first, and then and then. Uh, uh, but you're going to have to have a trellis system. Got to have a trellis grapes. system. Are there any major diseases of grapes that we need to know about? There are. There are. Um, Probably the number one disease that if, if, you, if you grow grapes, you need to go to your local extension office and get the uh, home orchard spray right. guide, then we'll have a section on, on diseases. And black rot is by far the most common fungal disease. It shows up as a coppery spot on the leaf, and uh, it causes the grapes to turn black and shrivel up, mm -hmm. and, and they're not any good. And that's probably the most uh, common problem. It, it affects both bunch type and muscadine types, but but probably more so on the bunch type than on the muscadine type. Uh, the bunch type, uh, some of them uh, have, are, are, are susceptible to a disease called Pierce's disease, which spends part of its life cycle on a grape and part of it on a peach tree. It's phony peach on peach mm -hmm. trees. It's a rickettsia type organism spread by leaf hoppers. Okay. And once they get it, it's, you, you, you just got to take them out. Wow. You know, the, the, the plants do not survive either phony peach on a peach tree or, or, or uh, uh, the Pierce's disease in grapes. Uh, muscadines do not get that. Uh, but <laughs> in, in a lot of, in several of the newer varieties of the bunch types are resistant to Pierce's disease. They have some resistance to that. But, but powdery mildew is yeah. another problem, and you know your 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 fungicide that mm -hmm. you that you go by uh, that you if you put your grapes on a spray schedule should take care of, of, of those kind of things. Uh, insects. Yeah, that's going to be the next question. Insects, insects not insects. normally much of a problem on grapes. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I'm sure a stink bug if he goes. Oh, back, sure. Uh, you know, yeah. but, sure. But uh, the also Japanese beetles. Japanese yeah. beetles, yeah. things yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, I've seen but, those. yeah they, can, they eat everything. That's right. Problem. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but uh, again, no, no, nothing preventative uh, that you would need to do on grapes if you have a problem. You can go out there and try to d deal with it. You know, scout. You know, okay. Keep an eye on them. What about any critters running around there? You know, not Deer not aware. I, you know, uh, not yeah. like strawberries that have okay. thing. You know, critters that get out there and, and work on them. Deer that walk across <laughs> them and mess up the plastic and eat them and and all that. I and I'm sure deer, probably if you have a very high population, would 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 work on you a little bit. But but just not not a lot of not a lot of problems okay. with, with grapes on with insects and critters and things like that. Oh, well, we appreciate that, Mr. D. Good stuff. Okay. Appreciate that. Yes, I was asked to come out and investigate this wound on this tree right here. And we had three magnolias here in a row, and they're all showing the same signs. Uh, it's a lesion that runs up and down the trunk of the tree. And I have a, a strong background in fungus with trees. And I have to assume that this is a canker disease. A canker disease uh, affects different trees in different ways and there's different types of cankers. This one in particular right here appears to be what I believe to be an inanatus fungus. It's a white rot and the white rot affects the phloem tissue of the tree and then also the cambium. And then it gets real soft on the heartwood of the tree and that's what's telling me that it's probably an inanatus type canker. The best way to treat this type of canker is to cut it out and treat your tools with, a, with bleach, a nine to one mixture of bleach, and treat the wound of the tree in hopes of not spreading the disease. If it is not treated, if it's left alone, it will eventually kill the tree. Okay, now I wanna take this tree apart. This section, this appears to be the only section of the tree that is infected. So we're gonna eliminate it. And for safety reasons, I wanna prune up above the first wound. No need to sterilize my tools yet because I'm only cutting out infected parts of the tree. This section right here is dead. You can see how the canker grew around this collar, and a lot of times that's where the wound sets in.
we see the canker on the outside, but how it affects the tree on the inside, the decay continue, continues to, to move its way into the wood. Uh, eating away that phloem tissue, which the phloem tissue is what carries the nutrients from the foliage down, and then eating away at the cambium, which produces the new tissue of the tree. Now, on this final cut, I am going to spray my tools right here because we're getting down to the part of the wood that we're going to leave. This is a nine to one mixture of bleach. And we're gonna cut it off at ground level. Get a nice clean cut. The, the phloem tissue and the xylem tissue is still active right now before the wound starts closing over or compartmentalizing. And treating it with this bleach, we hope to stop the disease from spreading. All right, Stefan, so we're about to put together a hoop house. So can you tell us a little bit about the advantages of using a hoop house? Okay, a hoop house is a structure that's used to actually extend your growing season. Okay. So that way you can have more time growing, um, actually start earlier in the spring and actually extend your growing season during the fall and winter months. Okay. So it's gotta be popular because I see it around town all of the time. Are you putting in a lot of hoop houses in some of the areas around Shelby County? Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. I typically install about six a year okay. um, for Shelby County and some of the surrounding counties. Uh, they touch Shelby County. Okay. Well, while you mention that, I mentioned in the opening that you are a master gardener right here in Shelby County, but you also work for the Shelby County school system as a farm manager. So you actually have experience in actually putting together hoop houses, right? Absolutely. I've done this for the past three years. I'm right. Shelby County Schools farm manager educator, yeah. and I operate the farm school program that we have over about 60 school gardens in the Shelby County area. 60? Yes, over Y'all doing 60. some good work. All right, so you want to start, you know, with the demonstration and how you Absolutely. put it together? Okay. Okay. Let's grab our parts. Okay. Okay. First, we're going to start off with our PVC straps. Okay. That's actually going to hold the PVC into the raised bed. Let's start down on this down end. Okay. And you want to actually install this on the inside of the raised bed. It's going to hold the PVC in place and it's going to be temporary. Okay. So you can take it in and out. There it goes. See it under there? Okay. Uh-huh. Now, how did you first learn how to do this? Did somebody have to demonstrate it uh, for you as well? Um, it's trial one of those things, trial and error, and actually just trying to keep growing during your season. Just seeing what actually works and doesn't work okay. in the area. And you actually want to use your exterior screws so that way they won't rust if you actually want to take them back out of your raised bed. Okay. We're going to put them on both sides and we're going to do six going all the way down for each of the hoops. Okay. Which will be three hoops. So now we have the pipe straps in, what do we do next? Okay, next step we're actually going to go get our PVC pipe. Okay. You're gonna have three PVC pipes. It's gonna go one hoop here, one hoop here, and one hoop here connected. Okay. connected. And these are actually gonna be half the length of the hoop house, okay. of the raised bed. So you're gonna slide this in. There it goes. This in, and then you're gonna bend it over. Aha. Uh -huh. And slide the other end at this length. How about that? Okay, that and you're gonna do that for this one as well as this one. Oh, yeah. All right, okay. and our next step is gonna actually install the purling. It's gonna be a PVC pipe that's gonna go from this end to this end, but we're gonna overlap by an inch okay. on each side. Okay. Do you need me to hold it up there? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, and what we're going to use to attach this, we're going to use U-bolts. Okay. And we have three U-bolts that we're going to slide in place. 
to lock it in place. And you can find these supplies just about anywhere, right? Absolutely. Any hardware store, automotive stores okay. will have these supplies that you actually need. <laughs> all right, and we're just going to hand tighten these to secure this in place for all three of the joints. Do you consider this to be pretty inexpensive? It's very inexpensive. Uh, most of the time, it's cheaper than actually going out and buying a kit. Right. Now, is there a difference between saying high tunnel and hoop house? No, a lot of times they're interchangeable. Okay. Um, I've heard hoop house tunnels. and high tunnel are basically the exact same okay. thing. Um, there are different types of hoop houses and high tunnels. There are the temporary hoop houses and high tunnels that you can make out of PVC pipe like these. You okay. can make them any size, but most of the ones you see around the city are actually the permanent styles. Okay. Um, they're made out of metal. Um, and they're actually the round style or the Quonset style, and they're made to last. Okay. I've seen the Quonset style a few times around Shelby County. Okay. So our next step would be? Our next step will to be PVC end caps. End so caps. that'll actually prevent the plastic from getting torn once it's placed over. Okay. You'll do the honors of sliding this on. Uh, yeah, I, could, I think I can handle that. All right. And it doesn't have to be tight. Okay. It just has to be, be on. on there. Okay. All right. And then our next step will be to lay out the plastic that goes over because this is actually one secure hoop house. Huh. Right. Now, what type of uh, plastic? What's the okay. What nice. you want to use is a six mil polyethylene plastic that's hmm. going to be clear that'll actually go over top of the frame. Okay. All right. And we'll you just roll it. this out. We're going to roll it out? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you want it to actually extend to the ground. Okay. And then go to the end. Do I need to extend this down? Or? Yep. Okay. Extend it down to the ground. All right. And then we're actually going to cut a little bit more than you need. So that way you don't have to actually have to go back and buy more plastic. All right. And if you'll do the honors, you okay, will take just, your end okay. and I will take my end. And, it goes up, and all we'll just down. spread this open. As you see, we have enough length to cover <laughs> up the ends on both sides. Okay. Okay, our next step is to use a plastic tubing. It's cut in a length of three inches and it's slit down the middle. So that way it can actually go around the PVC pipe and clamp onto the plastic to actually hold that in place so nothing gets torn. Okay. All right, our next step, we're going to take our clamps and place them on our plastic to hold that in place. So okay. that way, nothing will blow out. All right. Okay. I think I can handle that, too. All right. I think that works. All right. And our last step is to take the piece of wood to set on the outside. Okay edge of the plastic to hold that down so wind does not go up underneath it or anything, insects or bugs. That way, high winds, anything, snow. There are alternatives that we can actually use instead of wood. You can use some rocks or anything that's heavy to actually let play on, lay on the plastic okay. in order to actually secure it and make sure it doesn't blow away. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you this. So what do we do with the excess plastic that we have here? The excess plastic, you can actually take and bunch up and place something heavy down, okay. another piece of wood or a rock to actually hold it down in place. All right, Stefan, so interesting question, all right? How long would this extend the growing season? The growing season, you can actually start early in spring and you can actually extend your growing season until fall and into winter. Okay. Uh, most of the times you wanna plant something cold variety, but I've actually been able to plant all the way to January. Okay, so you definitely need the sunlight though, it's critical. 
Absolutely, this is actually warmed up by the sun. If you have two weeks of no sun, then the temperature inside this is gonna be the same temperature as outside. If the sun's out, it can actually go up to 15 to 40 degrees above the temperature right. outside and extend your growing season. Okay, I right, appreciate that information. Okay. All right. And welcome back to the studio, Chris Hardaway, along with Chris Cooper and Mr. D. You'll meet them in just a moment, but right now you're the important one. Call us, 325-6565, to support this station and its great programming. If you enjoy the family plot, if you enjoy all the great how-to programs that have been on public TV over the years, this old house, it's still around, all these great shows, the cooking shows, if you enjoy this kind of programming, then it's up to you to help keep it on Channel 10, because it's viewer-supported TV, we can't do it without you. So. Make the telephone call now and support this station with your dollars, especially local shows like The Family Plot. Again, we're targeting this local area with this great gardening advice. You know, there are some shows on national TV, but they don't target this local area the way a show like The Family Plot can. So, if you enjoy it, if you use the information, support us with your dollars. Let me go over all the gifts very quickly. At the $5 ongoing monthly level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set, plus your enrolled in Passport. At the $10 ongoing monthly level, it's the Mid-South Garden Guide, plus the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. It's a 550-page guide published by the Memphis Garden Club. And last, at the $20 ongoing gift level, it's tickets for two to attend a taping of the Family Plot on Saturday, August 18th of this year. Uh, this is a very special thank you gift. It also includes the Garden Guide, the Trial, and the Cultivator Sit. Limited number of these, so if you want to attend the taping, get on the phone right now. Let's go over to Chris Cooper and Mr. D. I'll tell you what, Mr. D, time really flies when you're having fun. Doesn't it, though? I can remember getting a phone call, you know, some years back now from Sally Stover, actually works here, and she told me they were thinking about piloting a gardening program, and they were looking for a host for this program, and she's like, guess what, your name has come up several times, so we would like for you to come over to the studio and sit down with our producer, at that time it was Amy, yeah. and, uh, you know, see what you think about doing this. I was like, wow, I mean, my name actually came up to host the show. Um, I've done a lot of presentations, I've never hosted, you know, a gardening show, I've been on TV a couple of times, you know, Booker. Uh, yeah. program yeah. and such but man I was just you know just humble just overwhelmed with joy uh, of getting this opportunity to do this so uh, and here we are still to yeah. today how'd you I how'd you manage to get over here with I us I remember that I think I think I was on one of the first shows mm -hmm. if not the first right. show and uh, I that was about the time that I retired I was I think I was back on board working half time you know on a half time appointment mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I noticed you did a great job it was to be a natural at it and and then we got a lot of good feedback oh, great a lot feedback. of good feedback from folks and and uh, in you know in our line of work any way that we can mm -hmm. deliver good research generated mm -hmm. information right uh, it's good it's a good thing and, right. and this was a, another avenue and a fairly unique one you know. right I mean it's a good way for us to market extension you think about it because exactly. the first show that we ever did we actually talked about extension service and we did a soil test you actually did that for don't us. guess soil test don't you guess know, soil that's test. what we've been preaching for a long time <laughs> and this was another good venue to, to do that yeah soil test is something you should always do anyway right and that's right you got to <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been an experience I keep thinking you know I, I, I repeat I retired yeah, you retired. Back that many years ago, <laughs> and I'm still retired. Yeah, you still are. Sort of, but... Uh, we so. appreciate you being with us. <laughs> Thank you. All right, back to you, Chris. Well, we're glad that Mr. D isn't totally retired, and that he's here on Family Plot giving us the information. So make the telephone call to support this station and its great programming. You know, one of the great benefits, sort of a under-the-radar uh, benefit, uh, is the member card. For every contribution of $75 or more, you can get this member card, which entitles you to two-for-one savings at a lot of locations throughout the area, restaurants, lodgings, uh, various benefits. But we've just added some interesting ones if you happen to be a gardener, because we've got two-for-one, or we've got discount deals at Tri-State Irrigation, at Bartlett Nursery, at Classic Lawns and Organic Services, among many others. Uh, home and garden benefits for you on the member card. Just make the telephone call, support us with your dollars, 325-6565. Also, don't forget about giving on a monthly basis. It's called a sustaining membership. 
Whatever amount you choose, you give to us monthly, it's done simply through an electronic bank draft or can be done on your credit card. So whatever amount you choose, uh, it's easy on you because obviously uh, it spreads those dollars out across a number of months. It helps us because we get a sustaining source of income. Plus, on your end of things, you never have to worry about renewing because it's auto renewing. So make the telephone call, 325-6565 and become a sustaining member. One more time on the gifts, let me review them. At the $5 ongoing monthly level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set plus your enrolled in Passport. At the $10 ongoing monthly uh, gift level, it's the Mid-South Garden Guide plus the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. 550 page guide published by the Memphis Garden Club, lots of great information. Plus you're also enrolled in Passport and that member card I just mentioned. And at the $20 ongoing monthly level, it's tickets for two to attend a taping of the family plot on Saturday, August 18th. You'll also get the garden guide and the trial and the cultivator set. And you get to ask questions once you get to the studio. So this is a limited offer. Make the telephone call now and get it. Let's go back over to Chris. All right, Mr. D. Let's talk about some of your favorite shows. Do you have a couple that actually come to oh, mind? Oh, it's a lot of them. I mean, <laughs> you know, all of them are good. Oh, yeah, I enjoy are. all of them. It's enjoyable. I, I don't ever remember leaving with a bad feeling. Oh, good. But I'm an animal science. Uh -huh. at, you know, animal science training is my basic training. I think I know where you're training. going. And so if they've got critters, and, and I think uh, probably my favorite is, is uh, with Rick Pudwell when uh -huh. he brought the chickens. That's right. And we had the crowing rooster. Uh, I remember that. Uh, and, and that was that was just pretty neat. I felt right at home. You know, with roosters crowing in the background. That's just like I grew up. Man. I woke up every morning to roosters crowing. Uh, then some of the other uh, with critters, the. Uh, you know, I don't like possums, but uh, Andy brought the possum. Andy brought a possum. What about the snake? Remember that time he brought snake, the snake? Yeah, he brought snakes. I don't particularly care oh, for snakes. They're not very lovable. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I like and uh, enjoy those those kind of shows. I actually liked. Uh, we actually tagged some uh, butterflies. I thought those were a pretty neat show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like all of the demonstrations. You know, we went out to Jones Orchard one time. Right. Yeah, it was really. That's we cool. actually, you know, pruned some uh, peach trees. Pruned some peach trees. Too. I saw a different like those. Uh, anytime we're out in the family plot, you know, garden. I like those demos. All as the well. hands on stuff. Mm, all the hands on I enjoy stuff. It. I enjoy doing that. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit more than just standing up mm -hmm. and, and saying something. When you can demonstrate it and mm -hmm. actually, you know, get your hands a little dirty, I think that that's a good thing. I think it is good. I'll tell you something else too, though. What about the cooking shows? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> always a pleasure. Oh, you know. We've had some pretty good meals, uh, you know. Never, some of never shows, had right? anything bad. Even the vegetarian stuff. Because <laughs> you know, we know I'm, you like the meat, right? I always ask where the beef. Where's the beef? But. Uh, uh, they, the folks know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, but it's yeah. always, uh, you know, it's always fun. You know, yeah. anytime, because uh, again, we learned a lot, you know, from all of our, you know, guests that have been on the show. So it's always a good time. Yeah, you know, I've got things in my landscape that I planted because How of that? guests on the show. Are you actually planting flowers, I did. blooming flowers? I, did. You think? I sure have. I, and you know, I don't do much of that kind of stuff. I know you I don't. That's why I'm surprised you said that. Yeah, I don't plant a lot of things I can't eat. <laughs> but uh, every once in a while, I'll stick something in the ground that I can't eat. All right. And speaking of can't eat, there are some, uh, you know, hostas and hydrangeas. I, I remember one of those shows you actually taking a lot of notes. That's right. You know, and I, some like of those I, I have some oak leaf hydrangeas yeah, that I planted I that. because of that. And and you know, I can't. I haven't gotten any fruit off of them right. or vegetables off of them yet. And uh, so, you know, I do those for my wife. All right. I do that for Laura. And back to you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. I want to remind you, this is a great how-to show. You need to support it. Where else are you going to get gardening tips like this except on Channel 10 and on the Family Plot? So if you value that, again, it's viewer supported TV, can't do it without your help. So if you want more tips, make the telephone call. Speaking of tips, I, I want to tell you coming up in the next segment, it's a question and answer. So stay tuned for that one. But right now, make the telephones ring. Don't forget about that book. You're talking about how-tos at the $10 ongoing monthly level. Uh, the book can be yours. It's 550 page guide published by the Memphis Garden Club. It contains uh, sections covering vegetables, shrubs, trees, lawns, and lots more. This book is valuable. Chris Cooper himself says he uses it. So you know it's valuable. Make the telephone call now, 325-6565. We've talked about Passport before. As a matter of fact, when you call and get that book, you'll be enrolled in Passport. Uh, this is a digital gateway to thousands, literally thousands of public television shows, including local programs. And you can watch it on your smartphone, on your tablet, uh, on your computer, or on Apple TV. So make that telephone call, contribute $60 or more, $5 uh, uh, ongoing uh, monthly, and you can have uh, the key to Passport. 
Uh, one of the other great benefits of Channel 10 is our ability to reach out in the community and we're doing that with PBS Kids. PBS Kids is its own channel 24-7 broadcasting 24-7 of children's programming, children's entertainment and informational programming. And it's made possible in part by you. It's the way we reach out into the community and make sure that our children are ready to learn. And you help make that possible. So thanks for your support and continue that support no matter where you live. If you take a look at our broadcast area, I don't care where you are in our broadcast area, you're a part of our family. So make that telephone call, 325-6565, as we go back to more of The Family Plot. All right, here's our Q&A session. Y'all ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be fun, right? <clears throat> All right. We're so, ready to roll. All right, good. Here's our first letter here. Okay. I am writing concerning my neighbor's pecan trees. She has several paper shell trees. Last year, about half the kernels were half filled. The rest were empty. What should you do to get the full pecan shells? She has a good crop, but not much fruit is in the shell. And this is Miss, Miss Maggie. And guess what? She's 95 years old My right goodness. here in Memphis. Wow. Isn't that cool? All right. So the question again, what should you do to get full pecan shells? We're going to start with Mr. D. Mr. Yeah. D knows all about pecans, Dr. <laughs> Kelly. Y'all well, right. Yeah. I can, uh, I'll bet Miss Maggie <laughs> has been watching that pecan tree. And I've got a feeling <laughs> that every year that it has a big crop like that, the same, it has the same problem. It's probably a variety called Mahan, M-A-H-A-N, Mahan. Oh, and they are a beautiful pecan. People love them. They're like almost, you know, two inches long. Great old big, you see that and you think, oh, wow. You know, you don't have to have a lot of those to make a pecan <laughs> pie. The only problem with them is when, they, especially when they have a, if they have a medium to heavy crop, they don't have enough ability to fill that pecan out. Uh, very, very few years have I seen a Mahan pecan filled out. Use the, about the only time they will ever fill out is if they have just a small number of pecans on the tree. All right. 25 or so. Oh, you wow. Know, very Man. small. A very really small. That's <laughs> small. Well, right. unless you want to get up there and pick all but the green mind. pecans <laughs> off. You yeah, know, get your big stick. Yeah. Well, and, the, and there are a lot of years, there are quite a few years you don't have that good a pecan crop. Now, there are other problems that can, that, that, that aggravate that. All right. Pecan scab is the number one disease uh, in pecans in the that. southeast okay. United States. Mahan is susceptible uh -huh. to pecan scab, very susceptible. And so it interferes, you know, it, you get black spots on the leaves and it interferes with photosynthesis. And so that aggravates the situation too. So if you have a wet year, you know, we had a yeah. wet year this year. Uh -huh. So pecan scab was very heavy this year. Okay. I'm sure that this is in a home situation and it wasn't a, in a commercial situation. If you have a few mayhounds out there, you can, you can control right. the insects and diseases. You can, you can do fertilizer. Yeah, I mean, you fertilize and you can irrigate and you can do all the kind of things and that helps. But even in a commercial situation, they don't know. Wow. Not, I don't know of any commercial growers that grow mayhands. I don't know of a single oh. one that grow mayhands. They, they, they grow other varieties that will fill out. And, and, uh, Anything. That's really have. not good news. Probably not. Yeah, Miss Maggie, I'm sorry. Maggie. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I just, unless you want to get out there and kind of shoot them off, maybe with a BB gun or something like that. <laughs> well, she says half of them were half filled, so maybe that's a pretty good crop. <laughs> yeah, well, and, you know, and the I half mean, that's in there is okay. It's okay, it's a, yeah. So it's, it's, it's good to eat. Yeah. It's edible, right, so, right. So you know, it, the thing about it, you've got to shell. Maybe for, and they're just not going to, if it is mayhem, which it sounds like it is, that. She's just never going to get the crop that every nut is perfect. Right. right. Yeah. You know, and there's other things. Anything on a pecan tree that causes defoliation, like, I mean, webworms. Mm -hmm. They get, you know, if you get mm -hmm. webworms and pecans. Black pecan or, aphid. Yeah, cause the leaves to fall off. Right. I mean, you're going to get a weak crop because there's no leaves to right. make the sugars that help make the fruit. So, Makes sense. you know, the pecan and it filling out, as we call it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Miss Megan, we appreciate it. And tell your neighbor. 
I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's our next viewer email. Would you recommend using pine straw or shredded hardwood for mulching around your plants? What do you think about that? Doc? Well, I think either one's all right. Either it kind of yeah, it yes. kind of depends fine. on the the area and the conditions. Mm -hmm. You know, pine straw is usually or I mean, uh, this was like yeah, pine straw. Yeah, pine straw. Pine mm -hmm. straw is it doesn't wash. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a place that it tends to wash, you would rather have the pine straw. But now the the bark is fine. You know, it's very deck. Both of these are very decorative mm -hmm. to me. Of course, the pine straw is going to break down quicker. Uh -huh. So you'd okay. have to maybe replenish it more often. But they're both very very pretty mulches. And the the pine bark or the bark or hardwood shredded hardwood is fine too. But it wants to tend to float away. But it stays longer. It's, if it's not going to float away, it'll stay there longer <laughs> than the pine straw. Mm -hmm. So either's fine. Yeah, either's really. fine. Good organic yeah. material, both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Which can be used by the soil. Right. And soil. some people are concerned yeah. about affecting pH with, yeah. with that. But that's a long, you know, that's sort of a minor long term thing, I think. And really not a big deal. Yeah, because there's always the question about using pine straw around yeah. azaleas. Yeah, right. exactly. Rhododendrons and things right. like that. Right, right. Okay. All right, here's our next viewer email. Why are my Sheffalera plant leaves turning brown and falling off? And of course, that Sheffalera is going to be a house plant yeah, for the most yeah, part. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I've actually had one that did that. Oh, good, good. I did, yeah. I knew what I was doing to it. <laughs> and I was like, you know, it's just gotten too tall and I don't like it. It's too heavy. But it, the Sheffaleras are really susceptible to root rot, mm -hmm. especially in the interior. If you drag them out, you know, and put them out under a big shade tree in the summer. They're a little easier, but when you get them inside and you've got maybe not the right kind of light, you're overwatering, so you get root rot, you've got all kind of foliar diseases that can come in that cause brown leaves, black leaves, mm -hmm. they'll throw them off. And so, you know, you need to, I guess, one of the main things, you, and you can treat them, you know, but that's kind of hard to do inside. Yes, so indoors, the best yeah. thing in the beginning is to Maintain that plant as healthy as you can. Mm -hmm. Get it in the right light situation. Don't overwater yes. because you'll give it the root rot. And one of the first symptoms of that is wilting and throwing of leaves when that happens. Mm -hmm. And if it's to a stage that it's lost more than two thirds of its leaves, you might as well chunk it, you know, and go buy another one or buy something that's made out of plastic or something. But yeah, they're they're kind of picky about being overwatered right. mainly. Yeah, I think that's part of the biggest problem. Uh, with I would them. think so. D yeah. Direct sunlight or indirect sunlight? It'd be indirect. Indirect. Yeah, yeah. Right. They they really that. don't like. They'll burn with a little in, with direct, direct sunlight. Right. But yeah. It cause those brown leaves for sure. Yeah. All right, Mr. Dean, anything to add to that? No. Okay. No. All right, here's our next viewer email. Okay, I live in the Caribbean, it's an area with no real winter. <laughs> Are there any types of flower bulbs that don't require winter chill? And this is from Marisa via YouTube. Yeah. Don't yeah, require yeah, any. Yeah, there, there is. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they have no real winter no, in the Caribbean, yeah. right? And they can grow paper whites. Uh -huh. I'm assuming when they say bulbs, I mean, in, in my mind, they were thinking spring. Like daffodils, I, right. when you thought that, I, I thought the, same the thing. daffodils, right. the crocus, and the tulips are typical traditional spring blooming, uh -huh. you know, bulbs. And I thought, yeah, they can grow amaryllis. Amaryllis is what they I thought. They can grow sure. paper white mm -hmm. because both of those plants are native to the Middle East, mm -hmm. which is what makes them go dormant or their blooming cycle is wet, dry. Ah. Wet dry. wet dry, okay. not cold temperatures, chilling temperatures like the, the buttercups need and the crocus need and the tulips, they okay. need, a, and hyacinths need, you know, a period of cold treatment before they will flower. Well, paper whites and amaryllis do not. You know when you buy those little kits, you know what makes them start flowering is you start watering them. Right. Right. They mm -hmm. come out of that mm -hmm. dormancy and bloom. And then, you know, so that would be one thing. Now they would have to manipulate the water to make them go dormant, okay. you know, in the Caribbean. So if they want to grow them as pot plants, and what I do with my amaryllis, after they flower, I'll let the foliage come on out and grow because it needs the foliage to be there for a while to okay. make the nutrients, to make the bulb that's going to make the flowers next year. And then at the end of the summer, or whenever they want to do it in the Caribbean because they're summer all the time, <laughs> is just turn them on their side in the pot and dry them out and just stick them somewhere. Huh. Yeah, so I just throw them in my garage in the wintertime. Of course, the wintertime is when you do it. There's others too, crinum lilies. Yeah, I was going to ask you about lilies. Uh, yeah, sure. crinum yeah. lilies, uh, gladiola. Okay. You know, same thing. So yeah. they have some choices. So there's some choices there. Yep. All right, Farisa, there you have it. Yeah, actually have some choices. Yeah. yeah. Well, no real winner. How about that, y'all? <laughs> All right, here's our next email. 
Is there anything I could do to stop squirrels from eating my tomatoes this year? Don't grow tomatoes. They tomato. frustrated me oh. last year, and this is from Miss Dixie right here in Memphis. All right, Mr. D, give it to us. <laughs> Same as always, 12-year-old with a 20-gauge, man. That'll do the trick. That'll do the trick. Yeah. yeah oh, I, mean, man. I know squirrel season's not open when your tomatoes are getting no. ripe. And I, <laughs> TWRA, I guess you can come and get me, but I think a farmer has the right to protect his crop. You know, uh, and you don't have to kill them, just burn them. If you burn them a few times, they'll maybe, you know, You mean not like come with a blowtorch? <laughs> I'm talking about with bird shot. With bird, yeah, yeah. Bird, yeah. Ah, man, that is tough, you know. Yeah, that uh, is tough. I don't know of anything that, that will keep squirrels from getting your nice homegrown tomato. It would be so um, hard. Yeah, I have more trouble with mockingbirds pecking mine. Yeah. Okay. They'll just pack a little bite yeah, out of the red said. ones mm -hmm. and then go on and do another one. I don't understand why they can't peck one. You know, one thing you, you know, might try. Peck here. I, yeah. uh, my sister in Carothersville is, has blueberry bushes, and okay. the only way she's been able to keep the birds from getting all of her is blueberries is she's got the yeah. netting, mm -hmm. the bird netting. Yeah. yeah. You might try that some kind of netting like that mm -hmm. over your tomatoes. It's got to be good because squirrels can dig and yeah. you know, they're tough. Yeah. They can tear stuff apart. Oh boy! But you might try that. You know. Is you, there any kind of like decoy thing that squirrels are afraid of? What are they afraid of? Twelve-year-olds with a twenty. <laughs> <laughs> if you got one of them decoys. Oh that might man! Be a okay, they're afraid but, of that. Uh, but I, I don't think you know, you, I've tried like a owls. snake or a little um, rat terrier dog. Yeah, you know, dogs. <laughs> Now, a Jack Russell. All right. So yeah, you, you just yeah. have you let your Jack Russell run out there yeah, and make yeah. it That's a hard one yeah. to. It is because I've heard people. And I'm sure you've heard the same thing. You know, using you know, hot sauce. Oh yeah. You know, some of these uh, repellents mm. and things like that. Uh, I even knew a guy. Believe it or not, the guy's an artist. He actually painted a styrofoam ball red like a tomato and actually positioned them on a tomato, tomato plant. Did that work? He said it actually worked for a little bit. Hmm. Uh, let me let me For mention let me mention one other thing uh, uh, that uh, my buddy Dave told me about up right. in Newburn, Tennessee, and he was able to grow sweet corn, and he kept the raccoons out of his sweet corn by doing this, and it worked. He put a radio out in his oh. garden. Oh, I've heard, yeah. Okay. And he played, I think it was rock and roll music. I'm not <laughs> sure. I would prefer country, but, uh, <laughs> but I, you know, and I actually try that. I, I, I've had trouble with critters, you know, chewing the wires up in my vehicles. And since I've had a, got a radio blasting all the time, 24 hours a day, oh, uh, when I'm not there. Your neighbors uh, don't complain? I, you don't have any neighbors? I don't neighbors? have neighbors. I don't have any neighbors. <laughs> he ran uh, them off first. But, uh, <laughs> but you might, you might, uh, cons you may want to give that a try. Loud music. Loud music. Loud music. And I've heard that for deer too. Your uh, lights that come on, but see now no, that's they, for nocturnal. See that wouldn't okay. work with a squirrel because they yeah, out there all uh, night. They, yeah. I say that and then this past weekend I drove home and pulled into my yard and the music was playing and a squirrel ran out from under my vehicle oh, so right by the radio. Oh, so They're getting used to it. They, yeah. Yeah. He's probably around there dancing to the tunes. Yeah, right? exactly. My wife said I needed to change oh. the channel. That, so, yeah. Oh, there you I go. Change change the change the I got used to that music. But, but the different voices oh, and the, you know, the DJ and the music and different songs hmm. and all that, it's a lot of variation there with the radio. So you may want to give that a try. Interesting. I want to give it a try. <laughs> all Let right. Know. Dr. Keller, Mr. D, that was fun. Yeah. yeah, I do yeah, enjoy yeah. it. That was fun. Thank you all much. Hello, gardeners, and welcome back into the studio of Channel 10. I'm Chris Hardaway. In a moment, we'll be with Chris Cooper and Mr. D. But right now, we're looking for you to call 325-6565 because this is viewer-supported TV. And if you love the programming on Channel 10, especially the family plot, you owe it to yourself to make the telephone call and pledge. If you look at all the how-to shows that we offer, I think we pretty much invented the how-to format here on PBS. You've got home, you've got garden, uh, you've got hobbies, you've got cooking. It's all on public TV, and it will stay here only if you support it. And great local shows like The Family Plot or Behind the Headlines or my show, The Best Times, are made possible in part by who? viewers like you making the telephone call and supporting this station with your dollars. So if you value the local programming and the local angle on things, make that telephone call. If you enjoy the information you get from all of the great how-to programs, make that telephone call and make that pledge. 325-6565. Let me entice you with all of our great gifts that we are offering. Starting at the $5 ongoing monthly level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set 
plus you'll be enrolled in Passport. At the $10 ongoing monthly level, it's the Mid-South Garden Guide plus that trowel and cultivator set. It's a 550 page book filled with lots of information. And at the $20 ongoing monthly level, it's two tickets to attend a taping of The Family Plot. On Saturday, August 18th, you'll get to ask questions. Plus, you're gonna get the trowel, the garden guide, and the cultivator set, all here at Channel 10. Now let's go over to Chris. Hi, right, Mr. D, I wanna talk a little bit more about this Mid-South Garden Guide. I mean, again, I take this everywhere I go. It is literally in my car, in my pool cart, everywhere I go. I always pull this out. Good information in here actually has a month-by-month -month gardening guide. So every month you should be doing something in the garden. It tells you specifically what you need to be doing every month. And then it talks about lawns, you know, how to take care of your lawns. It talks about vegetables, the different type of cultivars you can actually grow in this area. It talks about the trees that you can grow in this area. So just about everything you want to know about gardening, it's in this so, so if you guide. lack organizational skills, this organizes things for you. You can plan the future by looking at the future. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly right. You know what be, be prepared. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, garden care, it talks about soil tests. You know, we've had some real good people that are actually contributors, you know, to this mix South Garden Guide. Our own extension folks yeah, are there. Booker T. Yeah, Lee, Booker Mary T. Wade, Miss Mary Way. in there, yeah. Right. You know, Dale Skaggs. Yeah. Sure. You know, so these people contributed to this book. So, of course, you know, they know what they were talking about. Of course. So this is good yeah. stuff. But again, anything you want to know about gardening is definitely here. So I would, you know, tell folks, look, you will use this book. There's no doubt about that. Because you wish you had this book too, right? I do. I can't believe I've worked down here 15 years without <laughs> one on my desk. Uh, still haven't figured that out. Like I said, I got an autographed copy from Dale, you know, day one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and I've been using it ever since. It's good to have friends in high places. And it, <laughs> it always works out pretty good that way. Yeah. But again, we want the folks to make sure that they get this because this is great stuff. I mean, real good, good stuff. And again, I read it often, you know, because I want to stay current as well. So, this is current. Yep. It's good stuff. It's about here. It's about here. It's the Mid-South. Right, it's the Mid-South. So we want to make sure folks go ahead and get that, right? Correct. Right. Now let me tell you how to get that book. They told you so much about it. It's a great book. Here's how you can get it. $10 ongoing monthly or $120 one-time gift to Channel 10, you can get the Mid-South Garden Guide. We'll also give you the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. As I said, it's a 550-page guide. It's written by and published by the Memphis Garden Club. So as they said, it's highly localized. You will get information, local information, that covers things like vegetables, shrubs, trees, lawns, and lots more. And as, as Chris Cooper said, it features a month-by-month -month garden calendar for things like pruning and fertilizing. So, call now and get that garden guide. When you do, by the way, at that $10 ongoing monthly level, you'll also be enrolled in Passport and Member Card. Now, Member Card, you're asking, what's Member Card? Well, Member Card is a card that gives you two for one savings at restaurants, uh, lodgings, all sorts of great offers here in the Memphis and Mid-South area. In fact, we have some recent home and garden benefits that have just joined on to member card. Tri-State Irrigation is one, Bartlett Nursery another, Classic Lawns and Organic Services, and for home care, Flying Locksmiths and Memphis Computer Support. All are now a part of the member card. Great savings, great discounts. This card will pay for itself in short order. So that's for every contribution of, 60, of $75 or more. So make the telephone call. Let me go over the gifts one more time. At the $5 ongoing monthly level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set plus your enrolled in Passport. At the $10 ongoing monthly level, it's the book that I just talked about. It has everything you need to know about local gardening and will also uh, enroll you in Passport and you'll get a member card. And at the $20 ongoing monthly level, it's two tickets to attend the taping of the Family Plot. The date is Saturday, August 18th. You'll get to meet Chris, Mr. D, and Joellen Diamond. Uh, each pair of tickets will have the opportunity to ask a question and have it answered on the show. So make the telephone call now because these tickets are in limited supply. Let's go back over to Chris and Mr. D. All right, Mr. D, how about the opportunity to have folks right here in the studio asking their gardening questions? How about that? It'll be kind of different. Hope they don't bring any rotten tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they want us to figure out what causes hey, the rot. Yeah, you know, you, don't your throw diseases? Yeah, 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 don't throw them at us. Don't do anything like that. But I, I actually think that's pretty neat. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be, that'll be, that'll be new for us. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Intimidating, you think? Mm, nah, not nah, really. We, can we, we right. do that every day. Yeah, we do it every day. Yeah, it's yeah, part of your job, right? That's right. Do it every day. 
But look, talking about the show again, we have so many hands-on sessions, you know, where we actually, you're actually out, you know, showing us again how to prune, how to plant, you know, blueberries, blackberries, how to put up a trellis. You remember that? All right, hands-on training. Yeah, I think my back's still hurting from that <laughs> trellis bit. Uh, that was was it from the trellis or was it from actually, you know, tilling up the ground? Well, driving, well, both of them. Oh, both, okay. both of them. <laughs> yeah, that was a, kind of, or pretty hard. Huh? But, but good shows, nonetheless. They are. And we have those, you know, Garden Minute segments, which are real good. You know, people actually like those as well. And again, you know, the questions. You know, it's a big part of the show because right. people, you know, local gardeners have those questions. Right. You know, and, and they're actually good questions. Yeah, how to, to make, how to mix pesticides and, you know, how to be safe mm -hmm. when you're out right. there. And we always emphasize that. Mm -hmm. and, um, being, being careful. Right. And I always tell them to read the label, you know, right. of course. Take care of your tools. Right, because you're too to take care of you, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, don't mention that to Peter, right? <laughs> right. No, I, you know, I guess repetition is good because some people, no, no matter how many times you tell them to clean their shovel, they, <laughs> they still won't clean their shovel. They won't clean it up. Okay. <laughs> well, look, we want people to go to our website. We actually do have a website. Uh, we have a Facebook page, and on that website, look, we have we have almost what a thousand videos. A Think about that for a second. A bunch of videos. A lot of gardening, you know, topics that are covered there. Right. And I think you might be a part of what, maybe 900 of those maybe? No, um, maybe a third of <laughs> maybe them. A third maybe, 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 okay. maybe, maybe a couple more. Okay. We definitely appreciate you uh, being here, Mr. D, because you um, actually make it fun. It's been a so pleasure. It's really, it's really been a pleasure. Yeah. And we definitely want people to get out there and pledge. I mean, this is real important. They get some real good items, right? And of course, they get that Miss South Garden Guide, so. That's right. Good Please book. Please make that pledge. Yeah, good book. Mm -hmm. Mr. D might even get a book too, right? I'm thinking pretty hard about it, man. I'll tell you. All right. Thank you. Well, I don't know how Mr. D is going to get his book, but I can tell you how you can get it. $10 ongoing monthly as a pledge, you can get the Mid-South Garden Guide plus the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. Now, this is 550 pages of information published by the Memphis Garden Club. It contains everything you need to know, and it's localized. It's for around here. So, if you're interested in gardening, you need to have this book. We'll also uh, enroll you in Passport, plus you'll get the member card at that $10 ongoing monthly level. Uh, so you're asking, what's Passport? You're going to be enrolled in Passport, so what's that? Well, Passport is a digital gateway to thousands of public television programs. Our primetime lineup, for example, Masterpiece Theater, American Experience, I mean, you name it, it's all on Passport plus local shows. And you can watch on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your computer, or through Apple TV. Uh, it's a great way to keep up with public TV. If you miss a show and you forgot to DVR it too, well, you can catch up on Passport. So make the telephone call, 325-6565, and get Passport as an extra benefit of supporting this station. You know, speaking of support, we are a community-supported station. I mean, if you look at our budget, you are clearly the biggest slice of the budget pie to us. We can't do it without your help. That's why it's called Public TV. It's viewer-supported. So I urge you to make the call because, again, you're the biggest part of our pie. And no matter where you live, if you look at our broadcast map, we reach up into the booth of Missouri, uh, eastern Arkansas, north Mississippi, all of west Tennessee. It doesn't make any difference where you live inside that area. You are a part of the Channel, uh, Channel 10 family. Just join us by making that telephone call, 901-325-6565, and supporting this station. Now, don't forget, don't forget, you can come to a taping of the Family Plot. It's only $20 ongoing monthly. Uh, so join us at that taping. And thank you for your support to Public TV and the Family Plot. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplots at wkno.org and the mailing address is familyplots 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. To get more information on anything we talked about, go to familyplotgarden.com. We have almost a thousand videos on all sorts of gardening topics. We also have the parts list for the hoop house that fund put together. Also remember, we can't do this show without your support. Thanks to everyone who has called and made a pledge. If you haven't yet, pick up the phone and call 901-325-6565 or go online to wkno.org. Thanks again. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot, Garden Intimate South.
Be safe.